Imagine that you ask your kids what they learned in school today, and they give you a sales pitch to sign up for Obamacare. How'd you feel about that? Well, if you live in California, you may find out. Here to explain is Andrew Malcolm. He is, of course, the national politics columnist for Investors Business Daily. Andrew, as I understand this, the state of California has received federal money to propagandize kids on behalf of Obamacare. Am I misunderstanding this? No, Tucker, as usual, you nailed it right on the head. Here's the deal. They're trying to get people to sell Obamacare. So the California exchange got 37 million taxpayer dollars to spend to get people to buy into Obamacare. They gave a million of it to the LA school district. Now this is taxpayer money, which is going to go to teachers who are already being paid taxpayer money to take up valuable class time. Instead of history and English, they're gonna be teaching kids to go home and sell the idea of signing up for Obamacare to their parents, families, relatives, neighbors. Uh, and uh, it's a pilot program as described by the LAUSD. And if it works, they say they're going to use it, training kids to indoctrinate them uh, for other government messages. It's this amazing. is just this is Cameroon stuff. I mean, that's one of the creepiest things I think I've ever heard. Are people are people up in arms in Los Angeles about this, or does anybody even notice? No, nope. no one. No, notices. they didn't actually. It didn't get it. It didn't get much press coverage. It's like asking a fish, you know, what does the water taste like? Uh, it seems to go down here. But you have to remember, I think politically it's pretty dangerous. Uh, indoctrination is uh, genetically suspected by Americans, especially when it involves their children. Yeah. Now, when I was a kid uh, a long time ago, the indoctrination was anti-communism and sex education. And uh, as a young man, I recall being more interested in one of those programs than the other. Uh, but they were very controversial. And now we have this one. It, it, to me, it's, it's absolutely stunning that nobody says, uh, is this is this the right thing to be doing? Well, that's that's what happens uh, but, uh, when the media become complicit with a presidential administration. When your local newspaper is so on board with the Obama people that it, they don't say anything about it, and it takes you working for a national publication and us at Fox to bring any attention to this at all. It's it's an outrage, and I'm really glad you wrote this piece, Andrew Malcolm. Thanks for coming on and explaining it to us. Thank you very hey, much. Hey, you bet. Any time, Tucker. <laughs> Hi guys, I'm Chiffy the RFID Chip. That stands for Radio Frequency Identification. I'm here to track your children for the government for when the Satanists steal them and then you can find their corpses after the Satanic rituals. We're coming to a school near you to let your children know to go ahead and put this inside of their bodies without parental decision. That way, the government can know all of your secrets. <laughs> Chippy the RFID, coming to a school near you. each year? Do your little kindergartners have a hard time remembering their PIN numbers? Are you concerned about the security of your students' accounts? Get rid of those pesky ID cards and numbers and use something kids can't lose or forget, their fingers. Identimetrics Biometric Finger Scanning System was specifically designed by a school principal who shared your frustration with ID cards and numbers. 
Identometrics is the leader in providing finger scanning ID systems for schools all over the country. It will work with the POS software that you are already using. And, since no fingerprints are ever taken or stored, privacy is ensured. Eliminate ID cards and numbers from your cafeteria today with the touch of a finger. For more information, visit us at www.identometrics.net. We are back and I'm here with Dr. Katherine Albrecht of the Dr. and Katherine Albrecht Show from 4 to 6 p.m. Eastern on the Genesis Communications Network. She's a dynamic radio personality and she's written six books and videos including the bestseller Spy Chips, How Major Corporations and Government Plan to Track Your Every Move with RFID, and The Spy Chips Threat, Why Christians Should Resist RFID and Electronic Surveillance. So thanks for joining us today. Hi, Alyssa. I'm really happy to be here in Austin. It's uh, a lot of fun to be in Texas right now. A lot of things going on in this state. A lot of things are going on in this state. And it looks like on Monday you went to a public forum about the RFID. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, as much as I love Texas, you guys are the epicenter of a pretty nasty attack that's going on right now. And that is the tagging of school kids with remotely readable radio tracking beacons, literally on, on tags around their necks. So we've got 4,200 children in the Northside Independent School District, which is one of the poorest, least performing school districts in, te in the state of Texas, down in San Antonio, where uh, essentially the administration has said, we will track you every 25 seconds using reader devices buried in the seat, hidden in the ceiling, and we will make a record all day long of every place that you go. And yesterday, uh, some colleagues, uh, Heather Fazio from Texans for Accountable Government and I, uh, headed over to the vendor, uh, a company called Wade Garcia that manufactures these devices. And we were given a three-hour interview and tour of their facilities, very small facilities. It sounds like it's a big manufacturing plant. It actually wasn't. Um, during that, we actually got to see, he pulled up, uh, Mike Wade, the, the creator of this product, pulled up a screen. And I have to tell you, Melissa, it was one of the most frightening things I think I've ever seen in terms of what the future is going to look like. So let me oh tell gosh. you what the future looks like. So each of these children is wearing a, a battery, button battery containing RFID transmitting beacon. It's active RFID. So unlike the other RFID that I've been fighting all these years that doesn't have a battery in it and you have to have a reader to pick it up, this actually transmits a signal. So every so it's transmitting seconds, a signal all the time. Yes. Yeah, so every 25 seconds it sends out a little burst of electromagnetic energy that contains a unique ID signal in it. So it's a unique ID number. This pulse that goes out from these children has anywhere from a 75 foot to a 300 foot read range. Wow. So each child is sitting in the center of their own sort of electromagnetic cloud Beacon, of data. But they're also getting rained on by the other children they're sitting next exactly. to. Exactly. So the entire school has now become this sort of emitting, you know, You're just from being a bathed in energy all the it time. It certainly raises real issues from a health perspective. And, and actually, let me address this really quickly while we're talking about it. As uh, your viewers may be aware, I am a breast cancer survivor. I went through a very difficult two-year journey. Uh, battling breast cancer and as a result I am very sensitive just consciously of the sorts of things that affect our bodies and could trigger a cancer to come back or a cancer to start and so now you've got these girls and they're between the age you know, between the ages of 12 and 17 who are wearing an electromagnetic beacon literally between their developing breasts that is sending out this pulse time. every 25 seconds throughout the day. We calculated, I'm, I'm trying to remember how many hundreds of thousands of exposures this wound up to be, but it was an immense number. And I, I have to say that if I had a daughter that was attending that school, that I would be the very first person to say there's no possible way. Even if we don't have absolute definitive evidence that this technology causes cancer, we do have some evidence that seems to indicate that. We also have, you know, other studies say it has no health effects. So the reality, we don't know. 
And I, the idea of using young girls as guinea pigs and to find out 10, 20, 30 years down the road that an entire school or an entire district developed breast cancer because of this exposure would be a horrifying outcome. So it's not just the, uh, the microchips uh, sending out these beacons, but when I talk about this horrifying vision of the future, what we were able to see on the screen was a blueprint, a map, if you would, of the school. And there were so many schools doing this. This is schools in, uh, in the Spring Independent School District down in Houston that I was not even aware were rigged with this technology. I wasn't aware of that He either. pulled down a menu, and there was school after school, alphabetically. Like, when he pulled down the menu, you could only see the A's and B's. Wow. That's how many schools are doing this. So he pulls this down and he clicks on just a random school and then the blueprint of the school comes up on the screen. And in this blueprint, what you see is the, the picture of the school and then circles. And each of the circles inside of it contains two boxes, which is a number of students in that circle and a number of staff in that circle. So there may be like an eight and a 15 or a two and a one. When you click that, it gives you the names of the people that are physically located in that within that circle. Now he's doing this from Texas, uh, from San Antonio, looking at schools that are hundreds of miles away from this kind of command center. And, and we when, should all trust him to be okay with that well, information. He developed a program, so Creepy. I'm not sure how trustworthy that is. Um, but as he pulls it down, you could then pick any one of the names and click it. And then bring up that person's picture and their name uh, and, their, and all of their personal information and their student ID number. And you now know exactly who's in that circle. So you're turning a school into an electronic concentration camp, it basically. It is. And what's fascinating about it is I've never actually seen a system for tracking and tagging people that worked that seamlessly. I've seen a lot of systems that make efforts to try to tie in video cameras and do various things, but I've never actually seen in real life a system that does track people in that way. So as we were leaving, uh, uh, just driving through the streets of San Antonio, we stopped at a traffic light. You know, they have the cameras now at the traffic mm -hmm. lights, which 10 years ago was horrifying in and of itself. And I thought to myself, all they're going to need to do is get each of us to agree to carry or wear something like that. And then they're going to be able to do that. The police or uh, the FBI, the federal government, would be able to log into a control center, just like he did, and pull down from the menu Austin, Texas, and then pull down from the menu your street, and then pull down from the menu your home, oh, gosh, and actually horrifying. determine who is in your home, or who is at the traffic light, or who is fill in the blank. So it's the, the ability to do that is here. And the only thing standing between us, and this is why I'm, I'm such a big fan of InfoWars, the work that you do, Melissa, the work that Alex does, because the only thing standing between us in that future is the fact that people will say no. So right now in San Antonio, I, have, I flew out um, to attend a community forum put together by uh, Heather Fazio from Texans for Accountable Government, and we had uh, probably 70 members of the community come out and say, we don't like this, we don't want to be part of it. I then went in the evening over to uh, the school board meeting to actually talk to the school did board. Did the school go to the forum? Well, they did not. Uh, I had called them. I invited their superintendent to attend. I invited members of the board to attend. Heather invited everyone to attend. They said, no, as far as we're concerned, it's done. Oh, good. So they don't want input any longer. So as far as they're concerned, it's done. That was the one piece of feedback. And uh, even the vendor you know, said he got sick at the last minute, couldn't come. So oh, of it, course. Was, uh, it was really just people on the, on the opposition side when we made every effort to try to give to get them, them to an come. opportunity and a forum to give their side. And, and, well, his and product is so wonderful. Why wouldn't he want to come and talk yeah, about its merits? And yeah, you kind of wanted Well, he did invite us in to tell us all about its merits, and we captured all that on video, so that should be interesting. But I, when the city council meeting took place, and it came time for the public comments, the community comments, and I had, my name was on the list. I had gotten in early enough to have my name on the list to speak. And the, um, the president of the school board said, is, is Ms. Albrecht, Mrs. Albrecht, Ms. Albrecht, are you around? And kind of went, yeah, I am, and smiled. And, and, and she stuttered and stammered. We have this on video, and she said, y y y we, you're not going to be allowed to speak today. 
Really? Yeah. See, that's interesting because I was there for a protest as well um, earlier on in this fight. And they, it was probably 20 community members who showed up specifically to talk about this issue. And the school board did all this other stuff. They played videos of how great they are. They were giving awards they to the police. I mean, yeah, it was like this that. pageantry they, they about how wonderful and, the school district yes, is. And then it came to the actual issues. And they're like, well, we've right. decided as per the rules we just pulled out of this book over here in the corner right. that we're only going to let three people talk for five minutes. And then they started curbing people's five minutes. And it was just, it was amazing. Well, I've never seen What that I thought before. was really, it was really a show of weakness, I think, on their part and, and of, of them feeling intimidated because I had come in on, on Friday I flew to DC and I met with the folks from EPIC the Electronic Privacy Information Center and from EFF the Electronic Frontier Foundation all the privacy groups the ACLU we all got together on Friday and uh, we have a coalition paper against it we formed a coalition we've got a position paper against this and they said we've got to get these answers about the program are they using fair information practices what kind of security is being used on the data is it opt-in or opt-out can parents say no to this so they had a series of questions and the reason I had gone to the board meeting to speak my little three minutes they didn't even give me my three minutes was simply to say I'm here representing this broad coalition of well-respected international authorities on issues of privacy and civil liberties. And I myself have a doctorate in education from Harvard University. I didn't say this to them, but my educational attainments trump those of every person in that room. <laughs> and I'm that's sure interesting because that, that is a school board. And, exactly. Uh, you know, I, having a doctorate in education is useless when you're fighting Walmart, but it's actually kind of helpful when you're fighting a school An board. An actual school. So uh, I... All I wanted to do was say I'm here, I'm available if you have any questions about why there's concerns about this program, I want to make myself available to answer them. And they wouldn't even let me get up and do They wouldn't that. even let you talk. Yeah. Yeah, it's rights end when you enter the school property there. That's pretty much what I've gotten from it any time that I've been there. They've said um, that. They've come out and said um, that you have no privacy. You give up your privacy on campus. You give up your freedoms. That you as a student in a government school do not have any rights. And I actually went to the Northside ISD Smart Student ID Card website, which doesn't actually say anything at all on there anywhere about ill health effects. But I know in the past you've actually been interviewed for different articles about how pets that were microchipped were getting huge tumors. Um, yeah, that's an interesting issue. And to be honest, I am not really sure whether these things are dangerous for health or not. I know that as a breast cancer survivor, I would never put one around my neck in the same way that I, I wouldn't hold my cell phone up to my chest. I mean, there's certain things yeah, that well, just are common sense. Well, in the absence of knowledge. A absolutely. Um, but it really was the, the health issues that put an end to human shipping in the U.S. Because back in 2006, it came to our notice, uh, a woman named Jeannie, whose bulldog Leon had developed a fast-growing tumor around his microchip, did a whole bunch of research and discovered that there was a whole cache of of articles that had been published in uh, toxicology journals and like obscure chemistry journals and obscure biology journals that the animals that they were microchipping for laboratory studies were developing cancer uh, around the microchips. So what happens in a laboratory, you'll have you know, 100 mice and you'll decide that you're going to have a control group of 50 that just are normal and then your other 50 are going to get some sort of experimental you know, drug or intervention and then you see what happens. What they, what they discovered though was that they were microchipping all 100 mice so that they could easily scan them and identify which mouse was in which group but the ones that received the chemicals were getting cancer around the chips and then they looked and discovered that the ones that hadn't had anything done to them but the chipping were getting cancer around the chips also. too and even though it wasn't wow. what they set out to study the findings were so significant and were messing up their research so badly that they began publishing these articles so there was a whole series of them uh, half a dozen or even more and in every one of them they said that the microchip was the cause of the cancer that they were seeing wow. and you know these are these are cancer researchers that's what they do that's so what they, they do, get yeah. down into the microscopic level and take a look at where what cellular change occurred around the microchip that was causing the cancer so when we uh, revealed that information in 2006 2007 we actually were able to put an end to the microchipping of humans and it was really around that health issue at that time blue cross blue shield was implanting uh, patients they actually had a trial with diabetic patients that were receiving microchips to manage their electronic health records in the event that they went into a coma or went unconscious. And well, that's I, always how it begins. It's to help you, right? It's absolutely. Always, this is going to help you. They it's don't good come technology. With tanks and guns. They come right. and say, "Oh, it'll be more convenient. It'll be safer." And of course, when people are frightened, 
Yeah, well, fear is well, a great you way to, to get your... people to give up to give up their liberties. Exactly. So uh, it was. I, we have on pretty good authority that the people who were in that trial actually had their chips removed. Wow. So well, now it you know it remains to be seen whether it's going to be a health issue that puts it into this, a security risk that puts it into it. Um, the real scary part to me is not even the health issue. It's the fact that when these kids leave campus, they're beaming out that unique ID number at a huge swath of distance. So any predator that is able to pick up the Heather signal Fozzie even once about that, yeah. is able to you can buy those trackers, right? stand you can outside them, like, on a eBay? child's home. Yeah, stand outside a child's home and identify whether the child is home, look in the driveway and see that there's no car there, know that the child's home alone. It's horrifying. I mean, it, it's truly frightening. Yeah, Heather was able to actually do a FOIA request and get a list of all the names of the kids from the Northside ISD in that request. Yeah. And so she was talking about, I, I had read that um, if you just pair that up with buying an RFID tracker, there you go. It's I mean, it's disturbing. horrifying, you, the you implications. You just buy it off the Internet. I suppose that's the, the, the one silver lining. You would not be able to just buy it off the Internet. Okay. You would have to engineer it. But the parts used, it's, it, they operate at 433 megahertz, which is a hobbyist frequency. It's not licensed by the FCC. It's not a special frequency that only certain people can use. It's, it's broadly available. The parts to put it together are widely available on the Internet. So it, it would be a little bit of work, but not more work than a truly determined stalker Person. would be. Would do. That's yeah. horrifying. And I think, like you spoke about, you were a cancer survivor. My mother, five years ago, she was diagnosed also with non Hodgkin's lymphoma. And the sad state of affairs in our world today is that the first thing that happened when they told her you have stage four cancer, we had to sit and go, well, what could it be? Is it the GMO that mm. has been shown an independent test to cause tumors in lab rats? Is it, you know, the CFL light bulb? She had filled her house with these light bulbs that are always putting out that really high, right. um, low frequency wave, and she's closed in with that all night long. Is it that? I mean, is it, you know, all the chemicals that are being sprayed on the food? Is it this constant inundation with all the other frequency that's around us all the time, the smart meters? And she was living in a place that had that. I mean, and you just don't know anymore because we we have so much stuff happening all around us all the time and you got to you have to follow the money on some of these things i mean isn't this north side isd aren't these people standing to make a substantial amount of money they off are. this as well this is a couple hundred it it was a 200,000 dollar contract to put this in and this is just the pilot so wow. this is uh, 4,200 kids out of over 100,000 students in the district. So do the math. I mean, you multiply that out, and, and you've got literally millions coming into this small company. Um, when, when we interviewed them on camera yesterday and said, you know, what would it look like if you got the contract for the whole country? You know, and their eyes just lit up. I mean, obviously, that's an immense contract. That's the plan, I think, too. I think and that's the you know, ultimate when, goal. Once you've got the kids tagged, and once you've got them accustomed to this idea that authority figures, government authority figures, which is what school officials are, that government mm -hmm. authorities can have the moral, legal, ethical right to track them, they're going to grow up into adults who aren't going to think twice when the next move is to put them on the street corners and at the entrance to the grocery store and every other place in, in, the, in the public arena. And then then you're going to wind up with exactly what I was describing, where we're there in our car at the, at the corner, and somebody somewhere could zoom in on that little circle and say, oh, there's Catherine Albrecht sitting in a, in a car with Heather mm -hmm. Fazio, and oh, they're going northbound. And the ultimate plan to tie that into the cashless society, where they tie your finances in with your smart grid Well, and then that brings you, of course, to the mark of the beast, because exactly. you know, that's, that's what was predicted 2,000 years ago. You know, the idea, Melissa, that, that 2,000 years ago, uh, a, a scraggly guy, age 80, uh, in exile on an island off the coast of Greece, who was the Apostle John, would have a vision and be able to predict that 2,000 years later we'd have a world in which people could buy and sell with a number? Mind-blowing. A world, a world where there would be one government for the entire globe? A world even, for him, even the idea that you would be able to identify all people, rich and poor, free and bond, you know, great and small, was incredible they didn't even know it was over the next ridge exactly in many cases and yet now we're able to pinpoint the entire globe from a satellite and and find a, a quarter lying in somebody's backyard so you know, to me when when people ask me what's what's happening how does it tie in with, with biblical prophecy i always say you know if the world were going well first of all the world's going to hell i think everybody agrees <laughs> it's going to hell i think so, in a handbasket if and you don't have to be a christian to say that no if it were going to hell randomly I'd be scared. 
if it didn't look like what was in the Bible, then I would be nail biting scared. Exactly. But the fact that it's going to hell in precisely, exactly the exact way, way that it we is. were told it was going to happen, it is. then I have to say, okay, well, he's not going to get that part right and not get the next part right too. Exactly. And that's the good news that comes in is that in the end, the, the good guys win. Exactly. So that's what I cling to and that's what helps me to get through these dark times. And then the other thing is, you know, I've, I've been doing this since 1999 and I've given many uh, interviews that depressed and discouraged people. You know, not on purpose, just telling what I knew. I at one point had a woman reach out to me via email and she said, Catherine, you really need like a, a crisis hotline for people who've heard you speak who are so stressed out that we're freaking out. We, you, you need some kind of phone number people can call for counseling. And I went, I don't want to do that to people. That's terrible. So uh, that is why I, I stepped back and I said, instead of just giving people bad news, you've got to give people solutions. You've got to give people the positive. So um, this would be a good time to thank StartPage, uh, the world's most private search engine, for existing, first of all, to give us an alternative to Google. So we've got a way to go online and, and not be tracked, but also for helping to fund my trip to San Antonio and supporting the privacy work that I'm doing right now. So there is good news. There are things that we can do. We can opt out. We can homeschool our kids. We can put them in different schools. We don't have to send them to these government institutions. We don't have to use Google. We don't have to log into the global brain 10, 15, 20 times a day and, and mind meld with it and tell it everything we're thinking about. You know, we have alternatives. And the, the frustrating part for me is when I see people who know better who don't use the alternatives. You know, people with a toll tree and in their car instead of just taking the extra 30 seconds and paying cash you know, tracking device on, on your vehicle. You don't have to do it. Once it's mandatory, then we'd have a different conversation. But when these things are voluntary, people shouldn't do them. No toll transponders. Don't use a credit card. Use cash or we're going to lose cash. You know, don't use Google. Use start page. There's like things we can do to empower ourselves. And they're not hard and they don't cost exactly. money. And I, I ask myself, if people are too wimpy to use these now, what's going to happen when it gets hard? But even under the new Common Core, if, even if they said 3 times 4 was 11, if they were able to explain their reasoning and explain how they came up with their answer really in um, words and in oral explanations, and they showed it in the picture, but they just got the final number wrong, we're really more focusing on the how and the way we... to be correcting them. Oh, absolutely. Right? <laughs> absolutely. We want our students to compute correctly. But the emphasis is really moving more towards the explanation and the how and the why. And can I really talk through the procedures that I went through to get this answer? And not just knowing that it's 12, but why is it 12? How do I know that? I just met this woman, um, Erica, who's involved in um, state politics and especially regarding math. And we're talking about the, uh, the problem in our state regarding uh, students' math um, ability has really gone downhill recently. And some of the uh, controversial policy uh, implementation that's taking place. So Erica, could you just give us a heads up on, on what you were talking about with this common core yes. concept? Yes, um, Common Core is is a government program. Um, they will try to tell you that the states um, all designed this. That is not true. It was the CCSSO, wow. and um, they basically want um, all students in America to be on an even playing field across the board. So they created these standards, as they call them, that are supposed to make our children global citizens and be able to compete. Um, internationally. They say that these are internationally benchmarked and rigorous. These are their two favorite terms. So everything you read about Common Core will say internationally benchmarked and rigorous. We have been able to disprove both of those claims. Um, there are thousands and thousands of teachers across America. As a matter of fact, the Badass Teachers Association on Facebook 
went from wow, one Wow, that's man. the name of the Facebook group, the Badass... Badass Teachers Association. Wow. Get that, folks. Check it out. And the Badass Teachers went from one man <laughs> who had a problem with Common Core to 25,000 teachers in three weeks. Wow. They um, are fighting Common Core at the national level. And each individual state, there's also something called Maine Bats, capital B-A-T-S. Um, and they are fighting um, at the state level. There's also NoCommonCoreMaine.com and a Facebook page, no Common Core Maine, to get a lot of information on what's going on. Um, wow, thanks. So all of this sounds great. Government saying, um, you know, federal government's going to give you all this money. The other countries that we want to compete with globally are not using anything like this. Right, probably like China. China. I'm guessing. China yeah. is one of them. Um, Southeast actually, Asia. Actually, we have researched. Almost, India. Yes. Yes, most of Asia. Um, but um, as a matter of fact, um, Finland and um, oh. and some of those areas have the best scores worldwide uh, mm. when it comes to education. Um, one of the reasons for that is, uh, in my opinion, their teachers are paid better than their doctors, and they're treated in high regard because their children are important to them. Yeah. My children are important to me. You know, I find that, like, people who have skills in math and engineering and stuff, they don't go into teaching no. because there's no money. They're, they're making 75, 100 grand in private industry. Yeah. So. But they would make the best teachers sometimes. Right. Absolutely. Um, my son's robotic programs teacher is, you know, an engineer. Absolutely love the fact that he's having a hands-on, um, you know, help in my son's education. Right. But our teachers are treated poorly. Our teachers' hands are now being tied to testing because one of the largest parts of Common Core is standardized testing. Mm -hmm. So now the standardized testing that is coming down from the government level, which you cannot opt your children out of, is what they're telling you, mm. by the way, which is against all of our, our rights mm. um, as a human being. Um, so our rights are being taken away. The FERPA laws are being changed, um, all in an effort to make our children global citizens global citizens when in actuality if you really read the standards it's dumbing our children down hmm. how so how in what way um, do you think these techniques are not going to be effective in the schools and and you're also talking about something called fuzzy math before and yes maybe you could kind of touch on that well i've never I, heard of this fuzzy would, math yeah i would tell you i'm not the funny. math guru, guru in the group but I, but I would tell you to look up fuzzy math mm -hmm. common core um, it will give you some tutorials. There's some YouTube videos out there about it as well. Okay. There are about nine reasons that we have um, proven that Common Core is not good for America. Mm. From data mining, which is one of their biggest reasons for doing this. It all sounds great what they're trying to do, but their reasons behind what they're doing are sinister. So there's a federal overreach, which, number one, affects me. Some people don't mind that, but I like local control. I believe that's what our founding fathers were about. Mm -hmm. Um, the data mining portion, they're keeping track of our children's everything from psychological um, uh, information. Profiling. There's, they're profiling. There's 412 data points that they're collecting on our children from pre-K right through to till they graduate college. And that's wow. going to follow them the rest of their life. So let me explain to you how you sit in front of a computer. How they're gonna, they have wristbands that they're using in Texas right now mm. that gauge a child's um, uh, pulse and decide how they are paying attention to the teacher and it feeds back to the teacher. Wait a minute. It, this sounds yes. like science fiction or something. It does. Is this actually going it's on? It's really going on. It's really, we're, truly we're, going where on. Where they're measuring the students' uh, uh, vital signs? They to are see measuring. How Not only that, responding? but now that computers have these wonderful cameras. Oh, they right. are actually engaging their eyes and their posture on the computer from kindergarten on to see how they're reacting to the questions that they're being asked. Wow. That goes a little deeper than, than testing. Right. Uh, this is a universal problem. This is not in the state. We have 45 states who have adopted Common Core because they were promised race to the top money. Maine was one of them. Mm -hmm. We adopted it and then we received zero money. As a matter of fact, they tried to say that it would cost nothing to implement this. Um, Jamie Gass from the Pioneer Institute was here this week in Maine to help us with the press conference. And it is estimated to cost Maine in one year alone $85 million to implement Common Core. I'm just curious, is, uh, is Governor LePage down with this program? I haven't read anything in the well, news about this. Well, that's, that's another whole story. 
I do believe that with his heart, um, he, he really is a big component of education. He does stand behind education. It is one of his um, things. And, mm -hmm. and um, as a matter of fact, um, Commissioner of Education Stephen Bowen, who was appointed by LePage, um, resigned as of last Friday to head to the CCSSO, which is the chief um, op operating area of, of, in Washington, D.C., who wrote these standards. And oh. he is now going to be one of the major people pushing oh, Common Core at the that? national level. Oh. A little funny there. So he's going to have some influence in Maine? He's going to still probably. have his influence in Maine. However, yeah. I believe that the influence that he's had thus far um, has been single-handed, um, and he has not kept the governor informed of what's going on. Because when the governor has been asked about Common Core, um, he believes that it's not here. He did not know until recently that we were actually doing Common Core because the legislation that passed never had the words Common Core in it. LD 1422, take a peek at that when you have a moment. Um, wow, well I'm sure a lot of people maybe have been wondering about these issues and maybe they can get some uh, answers um, from these websites that you pointed out. And uh, yeah, thanks a lot for the heads up you. on this subject. There's Erica um, telling us all about uh, Common Core. If this is happening in your state, please uh, drop a comment. Would uh, really like to hear more about this uh, this kind of controversial subject regarding math education in in our public schools. It went through without public approval. People didn't read it. They don't know what it is. And it was an end run around the people and around the Constitution. It went in basically through bribery, through the stimulus package. You'll get dollars. All you have to do is get this new Common Core. What is that? It's just going to be a national um, curriculum. Okay, we'll do it. You will not have the PTAs will have no say you'll never be able to go to your school and say i don't like this curriculum what is this what are you teaching this doesn't work you don't have the right to say it in your local school board because it's run nationally so all of our schools will be controlled by the nation not by the local school board you will not be able to change the curriculum unless you decide not to be credited you don't want to be accredited fine that's fine <laughs> Nobody can do that. They're changing um, the uh, PSATs. They're ta changing the SATs. Every All of the testing will be changed. So if you haven't learned math this way, you're not going to be able to get into college. And it's this close to being done. If you don't act now, you've taken the right of the state away for any kind of discussion on education. The states have no rights on education if this goes through and you let it stand in your state. That's the second piece. First piece again, curriculum is really bad. Second piece is states' rights. Third piece is just as bad. Who's one of the big funders? One of the big funders, one of them, uh, is um, Bill Gates. The data mining on this is horrifying. The data mining, they are going to track your kids from the minute they enter school. And the things they're tracking, not just their grades, not just their behavior, but also how much does the family earn? Is the family Republican or Democrat? 
they are tracking 400 data points on your children. Now, they're saying they're doing this because that way they'll be able to know, you know, what, what homes are better with education. What, what, what are the bull crap, bull crap. They are mining our children for data. If your child makes a mistake, you know, in the sixth grade, that will be carried with him in the federal system forever. And they're telling you that they don't have the system to be able to opt out. They just, they, they don't have that in the system and you can't opt out. Why? You just don't put my name in it. Now what they started to tell people is, okay, well, um, we don't share it. We share it blindly unless state officials say it's okay. So we'll share it blindly unless state officials. But if you go through the paperwork and you see how they define state officials, it's anyone who works for the state. It's like you could have somebody who's working for the state who's not the Board of Education, not the governor, just one of the officials from the state is like, yep, you can use that. This is really horrific. Right now, the FBI is rolling out a $1 billion facial recognition system. This high-tech program has been undergoing testing since February. It compiles mug shots, iris scans, and more, and is finally said to be ready for launch. Julie Banderas is following this story from our New York newsroom. Tell us about it, Julie. Yeah, John, you know, the FBI is now revealing its next generation, if you will, uh, effort to weed out the bad guys. As you mentioned, $1 billion. They've put it to the test so far in several states since February. The facial recognition system compiles mugshots, DNA information, iris scans, and voice recognition, which matches surveillance images with photos of known criminals to help agents better identify and catch suspects. Now, the system works in two ways. It can compare an image to the FBI's massive database of mugshots to pinpoint criminals. It can also track suspects in surveillance footage by honing in on their faces in a crowd. There are those opposed to the idea, though, such as Democratic Senator Al Franken, who suggests the database raises serious privacy issues. Several public advocates are also wary of the project, fearing it will eventually extend beyond criminals to include images of the innocent. Meantime, the FBI says the database used in the pilot studies thus far only comprised of mugshots of known criminals. It remains unclear, though, if images of the general public will also be included when it is nationally implemented by the year 2014, John. So wow. Fascinating. they may be looking at you. <laughs> Let's hope not. But then again, I don't have a criminal record. That's a good thing. Julie Banderas, thanks. Images of the general public will also be included when it is nationally implemented by the year 2014, John. So, The FBI doesn't know where to find you now, but they will soon. Beginning in January and continuing over the next few years, the FBI will be setting up its Next Generation Identification, or NGI service, giving law enforcement an impressive new tool to track down criminals or just keep tabs on all of us. This new NGI system will expand the FBI's current database, comprised mostly of fingerprints and mugshots, with new biometric identifiers, things like iris scans, palm prints, photos, and voice data. Also with the help of new facial recognition software that will be up and running in all 50 states. Finding just about anyone will be easier than ever for law enforcement.
images of the general public will also be included when it is nationally implemented by the year 2014. Or just keep tabs on all of us.